Willis MB Basic Steering Box Installation. In this video, we'll be installing the Ross T12 steering box assembly to the frame of our 1943 Willis MB. Notice how the brass ring and all the wirings installed all the way up to the steering wheel nut and the push button and assembly at the top. This unit has been professionally rebuilt and is of top quality. Showing the inside of the frame rail where we'll mount it to, those three holes right in front of the bracket where the master cylinder goes. Here's the V pattern on the outside of the frame rail between the bolt hole where the master cylinder goes and the fender will attach. I'm straddling the frame rail here looking forward. I've got the worm shaft on my shoulder for support and I'm going to take my three 7 16 by 20 by 3 inch long bolts and attach flat washers to the heads. The flat washer will help prevent the bolt pulling from or into or damaging the outside of the frame. The flat washers are sized half inch by inch and a quarter outside diameter. I've inserted one of the bolts from the outside of the frame rail to the inside on the front top of what I will call the V and I'm using my shoulder again to support the whole unit and I'll attach a lock washer to the inside and then a nut. I'll just hand tight that for now. While I'm installing the other two bolts and lock washers and nuts, I want to let you know that these rebuilt units are available from Ron Fitzpatrick Cheap Parts. The part number is A1239 and it is named the Steering Gear Assembly Rebuilt. These are professionally rebuilt, they're fantastic, and they come right out of the box. You can install them, everything is pre-wired, there's no issues. This is a very important part of the steering system. The sector shaft has to be perfect with the ears or lobes on that, and then there's a bushing that's inside there that the sector shaft rides on that wears out very often and you'll get movement back and forth. And and this is start to start a lot of times of the steering issues such as the death wobble that we hear about all the time. The worm gear that the sector shaft rides on has been checked and is absolutely the way it should have been out of the factory in these units. I can't tell you enough how easy and nice it is to just be able to bolt this in. Now that's not to say that there's not some of you folks out there that would like to try to rebuild one of these yourself and I'm not saying you can't do that. We also sell a kit, complete kit, for rebuilding these boxes. That kit part number is A740K. The next step is to install the pitman arm onto the sector shaft. If you look here at the sector shaft, you'll see a little groove has been machined into the end of it, and that groove will line up with the point, I will call it, towards the bottom of the pitman arm. Put the ball towards yourself or away from the frame and line up that line with the point or the teardrop on the pitman arm and press it onto the sector shaft. The splines are all nice and clean and it goes on really nice and easily. Next, install the large lock washer and then install the nut. Now, before we torque this down or tighten this down, I want to let you know that I have tightened the bolts down to the frame. I have not torqued them yet. I've also used a method to line up the sector shaft where it's supposed to be for the pitman arm to be installed, and I'll show it to you here on my old CJ2A raw steering box. I'm going to turn the shaft, the worm shaft, all the way to the right, and then I'll take a magic marker and I'll make a reference point on both the box and the tube. Then I will turn it back to the left or the opposite way, and I will count how many times that black line crosses the other one. In this case, I've turned it about four times. Once I get to the back side, I'm going to rotate it back the other way, half the amount of the turns it took to turn it all the way around, and that should set my sector shaft exactly where it should be for my pitman arm to be installed properly. This is the simplest method and it's described in the TM and in the manual to make sure that you've got your sector shaft aligned in the correct position to accept the pitman arm. This steering box assembly is heading back to Oregon as a core for the replacement that I put in my personal CJ2A and I'll have this one rebuilt as well. They do a fantastic job. Okay, back to the install. The last step we have to do is we have to torque the outside nut. So I've turned the sector shaft all the way to the right which brought the pitman arm to the rear and I'm going to use a half inch torque wrench to torque that nut down to 90 to 115 foot pounds. I know that seems a little hefty but you really want to be sure that that pitman arm is set and that that nut is not going to come off. In the Team G503 video series, you will see the other components that all coincide with the steering box. Here's my end product. All the torque specs have been checked, and I've painted and touched up any imperfections or anything that I might have scratched during installation. If you'd like to follow along with the Team G503 videos and the restoration of a 1943 Willis MB, you can do so by subscribing on YouTube. Thank you for watching. Keep it safe, and happy jeeping.